morning everyone and welcome back to another studio vlog. I hope you're well, please excuse the awkward angle and the wet hair. I have no excuse for the awkward angle, but the wet hair is because I washed it. Makes sense. If you're new, hello, my name is Hannah. I'm a yarn dyer and bead weaver based here in Nottingham in the UK. I have the corner of craft is my overall business. Then I also have chromatic yarns. I need to order some more yarn bands. I need to write that in my planner. But today's plan was to sit and wait for Mario's parcels to arrive and then dye yarn. But his parcels arrived bang on half past 10. When does that ever happen? You have a delivery coming between 10.30 and 11.30. You expect it to come at 11.29. It did not. It came at 10.33. Actually, no, it came at 10.30. Um, but it, when he knocked on the door, it was 10.33. Anyway, um, so that's pretty amazing. Because I thought, if I can get start dying, get started dying yarn at 11, uh, 12 o'clock, that would be amazing. But I can do that before, so even better. So the POA is to dye up... Um, on some of the other bases, some of the resistances colorways. I start with lightning resistance because that's just a turquoisey color, so I don't want any other colors infiltrating that. And then I'll move on and see what's next. But I'm hoping to dye at least three of them today, and then I can dye three more tomorrow, um, or Wednesday, no, Saturday. I don't know what day it is anymore. Today is Thursday. Uh, I can dye some more on Friday or Saturday the other three because Mary is out all day. I have just eaten breakfast because I thought I may as well make the most of my waiting time. So I now have the tummy gurgles because that is what happens when I eat and I was very hungry. I had scrambled eggs on toast, it was delightful. But before we get any further, let's go make a cup of tea. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know what happened then. fun there's a cat on the roof that, that's not me so that's someone else's black and white cat um i don't know whose it is but it seems to be sunbathing on the roof uh, but yeah i got a yarn order in so i needed to put that away um it's just mohair and uh merino sock i need to get some more merino sparkle but they're out of stock and have been for a while which is quite annoying um, but yeah, this is me prepping the skeins. Don't worry, you don't see this every time. This is just me prepping the skeins and uh, putting the reusable zip ties on them, making it easier to find the ends and to stop them getting so tangled and all of that fun stuff. I just go around and loosen the ties. I do this on the mini skeins, on merino sock, on sparkle sock and on the um, mohair, but on double knit it's not as bad. Um, yeah. So I use the water, some water from my dehumidifier, uh, I save it, and then the rest of the water has to come from the sink because I'm, that's just how it goes. Um, and I soak it in there while I get everything else all set up and all going. I know some people soak overnight, I do not soak overnight, and it doesn't seem to cause me any issues. Uh, it's just one of those things. This is me getting the dyes ready, I always put it on a bit of kitchen roll. I don't know why, I suppose to stop it going absolutely everywhere. Um, and I have my little recipe book there too. This is how I currently dye yarn um, on induction hobs, double induction burners uh, with gastronorm pans. And yeah, I can fit four skeins of yarn in a tray or 16 mini skeins, which is not as many as I thought I would. I could fit 15 mini skeins in the other trays that I would dye in, and these are bigger than those, so I don't understand how that is the case, but it is, so yeah. So this is me dyeing uh, lightning resistance, and the stuff you saw me sprinkling just then was citric acid. Yeah, fun times. Uh, but this is the now the new technique that I used to dye. Before I would put everything in the tray and then pop it in the oven. Um, but now I have a bit more freedom and I do much more pouring over of things. And excuse me, I'm just going to have a sip of my agua. I've cut out a lot of time in this um, to save your boredom, really, of just you looking at yarn heating up. It's like watching paint dry sometimes. Uh, and this is just me speckling. I speckle directly from the spoon, which 
sometimes works well, but then the later I get into a dye day, the less good it gets, um, or the less useful it is, I suppose I should say, because the spoon gets a bit clogged up with the steam and everything, so the dye powder sticks to it. It's very annoying. It's very annoying. Some people sprinkle with their fingers, and I don't know how you don't just waste a load of dye, because it gets all stuck to the glove. But then if it gets stuck to the spoon, then that's also a waste of dye, so who's the real winner here? Nobody. Uh, oh, we've jarringly switched to undyed skeins. Of course we have. I thought you don't need to see every single time you put in the yarn in a pan. There's only so much interest in that really. Um, I am showing you me dyeing the DK and mohair, but I did also dye these on yak and on the mini skeins. I do find it quite difficult to dye on yak because yak is naturally gray anyway. And then when you soak it in water, it goes quite dark. So you can't see where the dye's gone. Um, and yeah, so I do find it a bit tough. Um, I was initially quite scared of dyeing mohair and then I found out you can't felt it because it's got a longer staple or something so it doesn't felt like regular wool does. Now I'm not scared of it anymore. It, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, that was quite a freeing bit of knowledge. So this is Cold Resistance. This is the colourway that I dyed up before Christmas for those sock sets um, that you all seem to like quite a lot so thank you very much. This is one of my favourites from the collection, also Lightning Resistance um, is one of my favourites. Chaos Resistance has received much more love than I was expecting. Not to say I don't like it, because I love that colourway as well. Just because Cold Resistance was so popular before Christmas, I just assumed that would be the favourite, but you know, you know what they say about assuming. Don't do it. Ah, another small sip, I apologise. I don't want to get like dry mouth, you know? So this is charm resistance. This technique I am coining as the pour and squish, where you pour the dye, there's no citric acid on this yet. You pour the dye on and then you squish it into the yarn. I'm trying to film Instagram reels whilst dyeing yarn, which is why I hold my phone up every so often when I'm dyeing yarn. Um, but yeah, I put the citric acid on after the yarns had a bit of time to soak in that dye. There was no heat on, it was just... And then I put the citric acid on, then I put the heat on. Once it's heated up, give it a flipper rooney But um, yeah, it's kind of, it's awkward filming reels whilst also dyeing yarn because you think you can only use one hand. When you're trying to do the pour and squish, that's a two-handed job for me. Um, but yeah, I managed to make it work. I just kind of do a little bit on a reel and then I cut and then I focus my attention to <laughs> trying to make it look good again because sometimes it some sometimes you get a giant blob of dye where you didn't necessarily want it and then you've got to try and sort it out it's a fun time um but yeah these these gains this colorway oh this is charm resistance this colorway um gets a, gets a little bit frantic with the speckles um I didn't realise how intensely speckled it was. I mean, I've dyed it up twice before, but it was quite a while ago now. So, um, yeah, that's all. Lids on. Next colourway. So the next colourway is Spell Resistance. This one is very purple based. The purple hasn't really showed up on the Yak base um, and it looks quite similar to Charm Resistance. I will assess when it's dry. Maybe it'll just make a good fade. I don't know. Um, but we've gone for the classic pour and squish on these ones as well. Um, so the same technique of putting the dye in and leaving it for a little and then um, adding acid and heat uh, and then classic flipper But yeah, I wanted to keep this collection quite cool toned. One, they're colours I wear quite a lot and I love dyeing them and they're so much fun. Two, um, because I feel like if I were to suddenly just do one heat resistance or something it would just be quite a jarring contrast of colours and that's not necessarily the collection I wanted. I wanted it to just be somehow or at least a little cohesive. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I talk and I try to pretend I know what I'm talking about but very often I don't. Yeah it's story of, story of my life. It's story of my life. Um, but yeah this, this purple is the bane of my life. It breaks very easily so you get random speckles of blue so you've got to make sure it's 
mixed in very well. And then it all froths up in the jug, so you've got to scoop the froth out. Very annoying. But look, it's Miso. Miso in the window, being very cute. That's her little sleeping spot, because that is the radiator. It's got a little cover on it, and it's nice and warm. Mm, how cute. What a productive dye day. Yeah, it's 10 to 4. So I've not been going too long, but you know, long enough. My shoulders ache, my arms ache, my knees ache. <laughs> um, I'm running out of, well, I'm not running out of drying space, that's not true. I have more drying racks, but my heated air is full. And then I'm working on filling this one. And yeah, I can come back tomorrow and finish the rest. I've dyed up four of the Resistances collection today, as you've seen. Uh, lightning, cold, spell, and charm. And then tomorrow or Saturday, depending on how quickly these take to dry, blah, I'm covered in the stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, I will dye up uh, chaos and poison, poison. But for right now, I'm just going to let them cool for a minute, go inside, make myself a third cup of tea, um, use the facilities and pop my camera battery on to charge because filming me dying has killed the battery, but yeah. It's been a productive day, I feel really good about it. That's good, because I was trying to talk myself out of dying yarn, and I'm really glad I didn't. This always happens. I'm always glad I didn't talk myself out of dying yarn. Um, and I sent, and yeah, yeah, I talk myself out of things more often than I should. But yeah, I'm just gonna, just go inside. So we've got to the end of the day. Mary has gone to bed. It's currently, what time is it? Seven o'clock? Seven o'clock. Um, I'm pretty pooped as well. Camera battery went on to charge for a while. Hang up, hung out with Mario, ate dinner. Um, and yeah, now it's the end of the evening. I know I've not been very chatty today, but I've been very proactive in doing things a lot. And uh, most of the dye's off my hands now, which is very good, they're very dry. So I need to slather them in hand cream. I've already had a couple of slathers, so I just need a few more. Um, and then this evening, I'm either going to finish my book, which is probably the one I'm going to do, or I'm going to knit a bit more on my calico quilt shawl. Um, but I'll probably just finish my book, truth be told because I really want to finish it and start a new one. Who am I? I've become a reader, apparently. Um, my New Year's resolution was to read at least one book this year, and I did it <laughs> really early on. And now this is book number two. After having not read a, fic a non-fiction, after having not read a fictional book since, I want to say 2014, all the way through, i.e. a book that wasn't a business book, basically. Um, it feels really good to be back into reading, but it is taking up a lot of other time. But it's okay, because I'm just going to bed early and then reading in bed. But I won't be able to tonight, because Mary should be asleep by the time I go to bed, so I won't be able to read in bed. Which is slightly annoying, because my bedside table light is like the brightest lamp in the world. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's been a really productive day. I have tied up four of the colourways on four different bases, and yeah, I'm gonna have 16 total mini set skeins dyed up. Now, I don't know whether to hold any of those back for East Anglia Yarn Festival, which I'm doing at the end of March, because um, I need to hold, I need to start dying for that. I don't think I'm gonna have a shop update in February or March to balance that, which is not ideal. So here's hoping the pre-order goes well. Um, I obviously will be having clubs still, um, but yeah, I won't be having like a regular shop update for those two months whilst I just panic bead weave and panic dye yarn for that. But yeah, this shop, all of these skeins will be going, oh, and it's a pre-order, so this is just for photographing, but all of these skeins will be going on sale um, January the 29th at 12pm midday UK time, which I know is not an ideal time for a lot of people, but it's... I can't make it work for everyone. It's one of those awkward situations. No matter what time I have it, it's gonna be an inconvenient time for someone. So I thought I'd try it a different time this time and then, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't anticipate selling out of a pre-order. Uh, stitch markers, on the other hand, might sell out. So that's up, that's up to you as to whether you want to set an alarm or not. Oh, there's my pen. I was looking for my pen. I was going to blame Miso for knocking it under somewhere, but no, it was on my beading mat, which, Kind of makes sense, I suppose. I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's been quite a productive day, and I do feel a bit bad that 
I've not chatted that much and this is going to be a bit of a shorter vlog. It's one of those things, it happens sometimes, I dyed a lot of yarn. I haven't been very chatty, I don't have a whole lot to tell you. Um, I went to Sheffield on Monday, if you're in the Patreon you already know all about that because I did a post about it. Uh, I bought a new book, I don't know if I like the book I'm currently reading but I've said, about, said that on Instagram, all over Instagram. But now I'm in the second half of the book, uh, it's picking up a bit. Because it's about like a married couple, and the, so the first half of the book is his perception of everything that happened. And the second half of the book is her perception of everything that happened, but I didn't know that going in. And I just kind of wish that the author alternated chapters between the husband and wife, but I understand why she didn't, because that would interfere with then the passage of time. Because um, time passes a little quickly and a bit all over the place, and it would probably get confusing if they were to do chapters between them. But, um... It would, I don't know, I can't, I, it's called Fates and Furies and it's by Lauren Groff and it was in the line up to be some bestseller of some win some award in 2015 or something but I don't think it's going to be a book I lend to anyone. It's not, it's, yeah, it's not my, it's not my favourite book but that's okay. I just won't lend it, lend it to anyone in the future. Um. But yes, I have other books lined up and have another one on the way, which I'm very excited about. But, and then, so my best friend bought me book vouchers, uh, bought me vouchers for a bookshop. So once I've spent all of those, and I've still got a little bit more to spend, so once I've spent all of those, I'm going to join the local library, which is like a seven minute walk away. It's not very far at all. Um, I'm going to join the library and just take books out or buy them from charity shops because uh, books are very expensive and... When you read them quickly, then they get very, very expensive. So I'm going to start doing charity shop, book shopping, and also, I just hit myself in the face, join the library, because that seems to make more sense to me. Especially because I have a library so close by, it would be stupid not to use it. But anyway, with all that being said, I am going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I truly hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to subscribe. I post a video here every Friday. Every Friday. Or I try to, at the very least. Um, I have a podcast once a month. And then in between, you get little studio vlogs like this. We get a little snippet into my life or some aspects of it. If you enjoy this video and you would like to see more studio vlogs, then please feel free to join the Patreon. Join the Biscuit Brew Crew. Link is in the description box below. You get one extra video every week on a Monday. So uh, if that is something that you think that you want, the link is down there. Feel free to follow me on social media. Link, once again, in the description box, along with everything else that I think you might need. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you've been up to this week. How has your week been? Um, what are you working on at the moment? Are you reading any good books? Let me know. I like a psychological thriller. That is the book at the minute that I am, that's kind of genre I'm currently enjoying. Um, but yes, if you're reading any books that you recommend, leave them down below. We could start a little book chat. Book chat would be nice. I always have a Discord, speaking of chat. I might add a book chat channel so we can chat books. It's the current obsession. I go through phases of being obsessed with things. This is the current one. <laughs> but anyway, with all that being said, thank you so, so much for watching. I have truly enjoyed spending the day with you and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.